If you have your Bibles with you today, I'd like for you to turn to Luke in the first chapter, verses 26 to 38. Luke in the first chapter, verses 26 to 28. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God into a city of of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutations this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive the womb, and bring forth a son, and it shall be his name, Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Most Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy things which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth seeth hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for your word, Lord. We thank you for this day as we do honor our mothers and for again, Lord, for each one. For they are special and unique, created by you. And Lord, we pray your blessings of your, you would bless your word today to us, Lord, and that you would move in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. As we again, you know, it's, it's an honor to have an opportunity to be able to honor our mothers today. And I hope and pray that you take the opportunity to, as individuals to honor your mother as well. And you know, you know, some mothers may not be with us today and have passed on. But yet we can still honor them with our memories and still thank God for each and every one of them for the things that He has, how they have blessed us and molded us and made make us made us as people. As I think about the scriptures today here, that you know, Jesus honored His mother Mary while He was here on this earth. He even told His disciples when He was hanging on the cross for them to take care of Him, you know, for them to to watch over her over her. And today I believe that gives us an an understanding today that we are truly to honor, as the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long. And that's God's word telling us that we should do so. You know, today is a special day, a day that we do set aside to honor our mothers, not just in words, but also in actions, and as well as words. It's a day that couldn't be possibly long enough that that we could spend time telling our mothers how much we appreciate them. Again, as her story said, you know, some of the things that our mothers have taught us over the years, some good, sometimes we wish we'd never have to go through them, but look what character sometimes that builds within us, mother's wisdom. And we think sometimes there's, as a mother, I can't imagine some of the things that, you know, how, if you ever had anybody, even as, as fathers and mothers both, as we have ever had to discipline your children, it's not easy. It usually, as you ever heard it saying, it hurts me more than it hurts you. There's a lot of truth to that, isn't it? But yet, even today as we talk about mothers, you know, they have a great responsibility upon them. A mother is one who has to carry many hats, has to keep the dad in line (laughs) and straight, also has to keep her children in line and straight, and is called by God to be a mother of good character. To allow God, and it's important today, I believe, that mothers, as they, they walk with God, allow God to be their direction in life and their number, the, what molds and makes them. A Christian mother is truly a special person. With all the difficulties of just being a mother, 
we need to realize that those difficulties are unique at times. A Christian mother certainly deserves praise. Not only are mothers unique, but rank up there with those precious gems. You think about your mother. You think about what she really does mean. Not, and I, so often I think we, we take that for granted. But think about mom. What she has gone through, the time she has sacrificed for you. Yes, you can have the last pizza, pizza. Yes, you can, you, you can have the, I've got a few coins left in my pocketbook, you can have them. Or yes, I'll, I'll make sure that you have shoes on your feet, clothes to wear. I'll make sure that they're ironed and taken care of. A mother is usually there to wipe away tears. A mother is usually there to, to put your arms around them and tell you that it's going to be all right when you feel the pressures of life. A mother is very, very special. And yet so often I think we take that for granted. But today is an opportunity to pay a little bit of that back. Not, that it would have, not so that it would do justice for all the things that our mothers do for us, but the time where we can take them out to eat, a time where we can pamper them, a time where we can put your arms around them and say, Mom, I love you. And I think that's important. If you're a mother here today, each and every one of you are special. And it's not just in words, but truly are, you are special. And to God, you are unique and special to Him as well. And I think it's important that you realize that. I was thinking about some of the, some of the things that people buy their mothers this time of year. You know, let me, let me tell you, if you haven't already bought your mom or, uh, or your mother something, don't buy her something that has to be plugged in. Don't buy her something that she, has to, that she looks at and thinks it's a tool. But give her something that is special, something unique. I, w I was there thinking last night and reading some things, and there's something that came across to me. I, just out of, out of a joke, how many mothers have ever received a vacuum sweeper for Mother's Day? You know, something they had to plug in. You hear that a good bit. But that's not what Mom needs. Mom needs something that is special to her, and that so she knows she's special. James Keller said, Every mother has the breathtaking privilege of sharing with God in the creation of new life. And when God places a child or children in your arms, his will for you is to bring them up in the home where they will know God and the Word and Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That is a big responsibility right there alone. When God gives you, blesses you with something that he has created, remember God has a plan for each and every one of us. God has a purpose for us. And when God gives, it, gives mothers a new creation from him, God is telling them that I'm giving you, entrusting you with something of mine. I'm giving you a, a, a blessing here that I want you to raise and nurture. I want you to teach your children to know me and to know who I am. And I look at that and think, wow, what a, what a great task the mothers have when the, something that God has given to them. God designed a mother to be unique in a special way. God designed a mother to be able to multitask. And my wife complains to me all the time. and said, you can't multitask. I, 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 and I, sometimes I can't. Sometimes I have to be, I have to do and finish what I'm doing to make sure it's done complete. She can be doing a million things. And maybe all your mothers are like that. You can do a million things. It's, ama it's amazing sometimes some of the things that mothers can do. To be equipped to run a house, hold with ease, and still look beautiful and glow as a bright flower. God placed within mothers a love, a heart hard to grasp, but yet is more powerful than any army. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion, of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring. Think about that for a minute. Unselfish and enduring. How many times can you remember your mother being unselfish? How many times can you remember your mo mother enduring some of the things that you've done, good or bad? But yet she, she endured those things and she still loved you unconditionally. Traits given to her, I believe, by God. It is a, and it comes from the heart and nothing can destroy it or take that love away. Isn't that the way God is? Doesn't God love us con, unconditionally and nothing can take that away? And I believe that's the same way a mother's love is for us. It is patient and forgiving. When all others are forsaking, it never fails or falters, even though the heart is breaking. A mother's love continues to shine and give hope to others. A mother believes beyond believing when the world around condemns. It glows with all the beauty of the rarest and, like I said, brightest gems. A mother can lift up and bring a warm smile which melts away all problems 
and heartaches. Can you ever remember your mom telling you that it's going to be okay? Can you ever remember mom saying, well, yes, it's, everything's just going to be okay? And she puts your, her arms around you and tells you that she loves you. A love that comes from our mother is special. Each year on a special day, children and husbands all around the world take time to buy that special gift. And sometimes that's need, but sometimes moms just like for family to be around. Sometimes they just like to hear those words, I love you, mom, or mom, you're special. And I think that is so, so important. You know, there are certain gifts, like I said before, you shouldn't buy. Mom was talking about the vacuum sweeper. That's one thing you don't buy. The other thing is, a, is maybe a, uh, a gift certificate or membership to the gym. You'll never be able to answer that, why, why you gave her that one. And there's other things. Moms just want, I believe, just want to be appreciated and loved. You know, Mother's Day is, not, is one day throughout the year that I said that moms should be placed upon a high pedestal. Moms should be given a, should be shown love and respect. Not even just one day of the year, but that should be a special time of year. But throughout the whole year, moms should be appreciated and loved. And I'm going to use Grover as an example here this morning. He doesn't know this, but out of respect, for years and years, he, he, he would spend his Sundays, afternoons, traveling over to see his mom. Hours. Trip. But he honored it. And I've always respected that. And of all the things he could be doing with his family, he still honored his mother, even though it took hours and hours. And, you know, and I think that's important. This is how we should honor our parents. The Bible tells us to honor our father and our mothers, and we should do that. And I, th I just commend him for his actions there, as he did honor his mother. And being able to travel with him a few times, being able to see when he got there, how he took care of her, watered her plants when she was unable to, and took her for, took, pushed her around in a wheelchair, took her to the church, and only give her time as they prayed together. And other things that he did as he honored her, and uh, I believe the Lord will honor him someday for them, his actions towards his mothers. You know, Mother's Day should be a day of happiness. It should be time of joy. And I realize that it's not always that way. I realize that some mothers have passed on and sometimes their Mother's Day does not bring complete joy because of the longing missing maybe of, of their mothers for they were special to you. But you know, the Bible tells us that one day that we'll all be able to gather in heaven. The Bible tells us if, if, if your mother was, was a Christian and you're a Christian and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that someday there's going to be a great gathering. And once again, you'll be able to spend time with your mother as well as being able to praise the Lord. And what a good time that will be when we will be able to do that. We think about, you know, uh, how a mom is special. And, you know, moms have abilities that, that dads just don't have. Sometimes many things, that, abilities that dads just don't have. But one of the greatest things that I can think of a mom having is love. I've often wondered, what would the home be like without mom? Or what would the home be like without? How would that love still be there? Would the love that moms have, would, it, would we have that same kind of love as a father if she wasn't there? Moms are very special, and the abilities they have is, is unique. You know, but, you know, my hope is that every mother here today realizes that the only more right way to live is to allow God to guide and direct your path. To allow God to be number one in your life and to, to be able to raise your children up in a godly way and to teach them about God. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Mothers are given some clear advice on how to raise their children. If you have an opportunity, read that. Every Christian mother understands in order for the house to function proper, first, there must the most important thing, there needs to be a firm grounding. There has to be a good foundation. There has to be something to build upon. If you think about building any home at all, to, for a home, just for a materialistic home, there has to be a good foundation. There has to be something there to be able to build upon. The same is with a home. For, for a mother to, to, be, to be able to do the things that she needs to do, there needs to be a good foundation for a good home, a godly home, a godly foundation in Jesus Christ. And that is so, so important. There was a mother one day that when she went home one day, she heard her, heard her young boy in, her, in his bedroom praying. And uh, as he was praying, it, it, it went something like this. He said, Andy, please forgive me. 
for what I did wrong today. And Andy, please keep my mommy and daddy safe. After he finished, he asked, she asked him, who was it Andy was? He told her that Andy's name was, was God. And she, and she said, she asked him how he knew that. And he said that, he said that in church they sang to Andy. They would sing, Andy, and he walks with me, and he talks with me. And, uh, and I think, think about that, that, you know, as cute as that is, there's a lot of truth to that. It's amazing how young people are very impressionable. And you know, as a mother, not taking any, anything that a father shouldn't be doing, but it being today's Mother's Day, as a mother, it's important that we raise them and teach them who God is. And I believe that we will be held accountable for that as well, fathers as well. But we are to teach our children who God is. But you know, even as this story goes, as this young, this is just a story. As this boy prayed to God, at least he attempted, he knew who God was and he knew, he knew where to turn to pray. And that tells me that he was being raised up in a Christian home. As I said before, Mother's Day may be a tough day for some. But there is hope. There is a reward. Knowing who Jesus Christ is in your life, that someday that you will be together again. And that is good news. The Bible talks about the, you know, the imperfect earthly families and how they, how they, can, how he, we can help them. But the Bible also talks about eternal families that one day we will be with the Lord, and that's important. That's what gives us our hope. That's what gives us an encouragement that someday that we're going to be walking in the presence of God. We're going to have perfect bodies. There's not going to be no aches or pains and more trials or troubles. You know, I think of all the difficulties that mothers have to go through today. Think of all the times they worry, the nights they spend up maybe crying for their, their children or wondering how they're doing. But then I think that, you know, someday all that's going to be gone. That God tells us that there's not going to be no sadness or no more pain. That all those worries and all those cares that, that, that we have worry about this life that bothers us. God's going to take all those things away. So there is hope. There is a time where things are going to be better. But you know, we, we want to thank, thank each again each mother this year because you are unique. And I believe that God looks down as, he, as you, he sees each and every mother that's here today. Each and every mother that's around this world. And I'm sure he's hoping and praying that each mother would serve him and honor him. So I encourage you today to honor, honor the Lord with everything that you have to raise your children up, to teach them in, in, in godly ways. But you know, as I said before, God looks at you and sees uniqueness because He has created you for a purpose. Not only has He entrusted you, if you're a mother, He has entrusted you with His creation or something, somebody that maybe He has a purpose and a plan for. I think about Mary. Look who she raised. Look who God entrusted her with. His name was Jesus, the Savior of our world, the Savior for each and every one of us. God's purpose for His Son, Jesus, was to go to the cross and to die for each and every one of us so that we could be saved and be free from this world. Who has God entrusted you with? Who has God given to you and entrusted you with that you would raise Him to be a godly young man or a young woman for His glory? The question is to us, are we doing that? Are we honoring God with what He has given to us? Are we being the mother that God would want us to be? Are we loving God as our Lord and our Savior? Not only as we mentioned before, of all the, all the, the things that you have to go through with just normal being a mother, God has called you to be a Christian mother. A mother that would honor him and love him. And as he, he has entrusted you with, I'd like to see gems of his. Precious creations that he has given to you. As we think about what the things that we have that, belong, that we have in our homes. From the automobiles that we drive to wherever is the thing that we have. Materialistic things. They all belong to God. But most important what belongs to God is, is the blessings of our children. They certainly do belong to God. And we have, and I believe we'll be held, held accountable the way that we raise them, the way things that we teach them in life. Sometimes you see children out in the public and you think, 
knowing who God is, knowing what God's Word tells us, how we should raise our children. And we see other children out there, and sometimes it makes you sad to know their destination. It makes you sad to, to know what kind of parents they may have. Not that we're judging them, but to know that they have not been given the ability or been robbed from knowing who Jesus Christ is in their lives. Today, again, I want to urge you as mothers to continue to, to serve God. If you're not, accept Him as your Lord and Savior and do what God has called you to do, to raise your children up in a godly way. Today, I want to thank the Lord for each mother that's here because you are special. Not just because, because that's what everybody says we should say, but because you are very special. God knows that. And He created you special. So don't forget that. If no one else tells you today that you're special or that they love you, remember that God loves you. And God thinks you're special. That is the most important thing that can matter. Have you ever had thought, thought, you know, somebody tells you that you're special or someone tells you you're doing a good job? It, it probably lifts your spirit a little bit. But when the King of Kings of the universe loves you and tells you that you're special, that is far better than any, what anybody else can tell you. And today I want to tell you, He does. He thinks you're special. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the mothers that we have. We realize that many people have great things in store for their mothers today. And lots of meals, Lord, to gifts, to talk, words of appreciation. And we thank you for that, Lord. We pray today that an extra effort would be made to tell mom how special they are. And as your word says, honor them. Today, I pray that we do honor our mothers. And Lord, as each mother sits here today, Lord, I pray you would pour out blessings upon their lives. Lord, that you would just touch them in a special way. That you would make this day great. Not only this day, but for the rest of their lives, that you would continue to bless them in all that they do. We thank you for each one of them. We ask your blessings, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.